بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ اسلام علیکم پاکستان وی آر موونگ فارورڈ ود آر بزنس ایتھکس ماڈیول اینڈ چیپٹر اینڈ وی آر ناؤ موونگ ٹوڈز دی فنڈامنٹلز اینڈ اس ویلیو آف مورالٹی مینی اے ٹائمز وی کویشچن دیٹ واٹ از مورالٹی واٹ از مارل اینڈ واٹ از ام مارل واٹ از کریکٹ اینڈ واٹ از ان کریکٹ وی ہیو دیز ڈلیماز ود ان اس شوڈ وی ڈو اٹ اور شوڈ وی ناٹ ڈو اٹ اینڈ وین وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ all of this we also look at the fact that is it good or bad what are the consequences of our actions what are the consequences of our planning what are the consequences of our products what are the consequences of our interventions all of these are encapsulated and encompassed in the context of morality so when we are looking at morality then it can be descriptively referring to certain codes of conduct put forward by a society or a group such as a religion or accepted by an individual for her own behavior or normatively to refer to a code of conduct that given specified conditions would be put forward by all rational people so again ladies and gentlemen it's about logic and reason it's about it's about being supportive and referring to why something is being done over decades or why is something being done over decades and now is considered to be wrong i mean just look at the context of women empowerment a uh, long time ago women did not even have the right to vote wrong long time ago with the exception of islam and a few other religions women did not have a right to inheritance and again what we see is that women would not be working in organizations women would not be given senior positions but in the past century all of this has changed but yet Ladies and gentlemen, with all the different conventions, different laws, different policies, different projections, uh, different media, and what not, talking about women empowerment and women rights, yet unfortunately still the rights of women are infringed. The rights of women are compromised. The rights of women are sacrilege. Women are considered to be objects. Women are considered to be property. why in this modern era of the 21st century why is that all happening why is it that we see that the cases of women harassment are nearly five times that of male harassment why is it that women are considered to be objects in the organization in the community and in the home why is it that there is violence against women despite all of these laws despite all of these conventions and despite all of these policies emerging and rules and regulations which say that women should be treated equally why is it that there is a glass ceiling for women all of that becomes a moral consideration that we are talking about and it's all about morality why do we do all of that why is it that there is window dressing on what is actually happening and we tend to put things under the carpet why is it that women are considered to be immoral if they tend to disclose what has happened to them why is it that women are subjected to different types of subjugation and also harassment and also pain for no reason at all in this modern 21st century where social media where electronic media where all forms of media tend to override our lives but yet we have not been able to control we have not been able to diminish we have not been able to eradicate violence against women we have not been able to actually give them equal rights why is it that women are discouraged from riding bikes in pakistan why is it that women are not welcomed in mosques why is it that women are considered not to be able to do jobs which require physical exertion why do all of these different interpretations exist but yet we say that we are trying to ensure equality and empowerment actually there is a huge contradiction which creates a moral dilemma so ladies and gentlemen so companies normally employ people whose moral development ensures that tasks are performed according to approved procedures moral behavior by individuals can be aggregated into meaningful notions of group or organization morality and is also open to questions so just like i was mentioning it is actually
question 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 so in morality it is extremely important to question what is being done and what is not being done that can only lead to better answers and through those questions there is this very vital element of having positive affirmative and progressive dialogues and based upon those dialogues we try to understand each other in a better way and try to create solutions try to create policies try to create rules and regulations and try to create laws which are consensually accepted by the majority and by the stakeholders so that is very important and there there are different levels of moral development we basically see that so much is being done in different regions and there's a lot of emphasis on education on training on moral development but we are not getting the results so what we are going to do is is that we are going to see the different research conducted by two harvard psychologists lawrence kohlberg and also by carol gilligan and also uh, dovetail it with eric erickson and maybe also include ned herman and all of these so these are very important aspects and research studies relating to moral development and we will see in the coming sessions that how they have huge implications on our lives individually and collectively so ladies and gentlemen just like i was mentioning that we are going to be looking at uh, the two harvard psychologists who have done extensive research on moral development and one is kohlberg and the other one is gilligan and we are also going to be looking at uh, a little bit of a comparative study with eric erickson and ned herman now when we are looking at the kohlberg model then kohlberg basically studied human moral development from infancy to old age and in that particular research he would be looking at how moral development is directed through moral beliefs and how moral beliefs tend to make people understand what they are doing and what others are doing and through that whole process he was able to identify three levels pre conventional post conventional and conventional and in those three levels he identified two levels each that basically means six levels so what we see is is that there are three levels and there are six stages post kohlberg research also looks at a seventh level which is actually embryonic and that is even before pre conventional so ladies and gentlemen in the next session we are going to be understanding these six levels and then move on to the seventh level also and then connect it with the eric erickson model of eight levels so looking forward to it see you next time thank you so much